Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo, in particular the Pinch Punch filter. Now it's a, not a particular filter with a vast amount of controls, but you can see the option now. I'm using it on a layer, so you can just, it's a real pity there's no time lapse feature. It'd be really nice if you could sort of capture what's happening on the screen. It'd be brilliant, you could save it to an MP4 file. In some applications you can do that. I would love to see that feature in Affinity Photo because be, that would be a real cool effect if you could capture that. Of course you can capture it, but you, can, you have to capture the screen, it's not so effective. However, let's get to actual the filter itself. And I'm gonna remove that layer because let's go right back to the start. So I've got over here layers and channels, over here view, studio, they're the key ones, layers and channels. Macros occasionally, if you wanna use macros because you can store running through all these various filters, you can store the re recording of them. Doesn't unfortunately do time lapse, that would be really nice. However, let's just go to filters and distort and pinch and punch. Now you can also use the layer and live filter layers. That's a non-destructive effect. This one's a destructive effect. You can only undo, unfortunately. So what you can change, you can change the pinch punch. Just set that, set it to 100. You can't extend it beyond those limits. Quite a lot of the filters in Affinity Photo, you can, you can stretch out further. But this one, for some weird reason, you can't. So you've got radius and you can modify that. Obviously now you can see an effect. You can go either way, so you can talk. Like that again, that would be brilliant as a time lapse feature. Now, just set that, click apply. What you can, of course, do once you've done that, you can go to filters, repeat, punch, and apply it again. Now, of course, what you can also do, it's quite a nice effect. What you can do, you can go over there, you can apply it in different areas. So, filter and pinch punch, you don't have to apply it obviously in the center, you can go over there, you can apply it there. You can set that, click apply, and now of course you can go to the filter again, you can go to distort, pinch punch, and you can go down to this bit, down there. And that's the key thing, just move the cursor. Just put the cursor down that position, you can see it warping those, that design there. And again, so you've got over there, and you can go up there if you want, but again you can just, that like, again that would be so cool as a, a time lapse feature, without recording the, of course, the mouse. So you can see it comply, and of course you can apply that multiple times. Now another thing you can do is really useful is a layer menu, and you've got fade, pinch, punch. Obviously depending on the filter that you're using. So you can see what happens, you've got this fade between. So you can have it max, or no effect at all. Or you put it in between, and also you've got options for blending modes. So if you want, you can go for, where is it, difference, good old difference. So you can see difference there, and you can, of course, fade it away completely, so you just get that, or you get no effect. Obviously, just get that effect, but not the, there. So let's undo that. Edit, undo, undo. Yeah. Now, what you can also do, you can do it with layers. So I'm just gonna quickly go to a layer and duplicate. So if you go with there, layer and duplicate, so you resize that layer, you can rotate the layer, of course, you can do a variety of other things, or not. If you don't want to do that, just resize the layer. What you can do then is filters and distort, and again down to pinch punch. And of course you can combine it with other filters. You don't have to just do the pinch punch. So pinch punch there, and then you can see, very, very subtle, that's why I put it up to the max. You don't have to put it up to the max. You can keep it very low values, but I mean, obviously, when you put it up to the max, you can see it a bit clearer, obviously, when I'm doing a tutorial. So you can see, you can create some very interesting combinations like that. But again, like I say, you can, what you can do, you can go to filters, and you can go distort and say deform. So let's just deform this quickly, and so you can create a sort of different design. And you can break it apart. It's something you can't do, unfortunately, with that. But once you've done that, of course, click apply, you can then go to filters and distort and pinch punch. And then of course you can apply the pinch punch to that. And you can see then you get even more interesting distortions like that. And of course you can apply it to that corner there, click apply, and then you go to filters, repeat, and you can see you can distort it again like that. And of course you can always simply hold that down and duplicate that design and rotate that and maybe combine it. So you can create a very nice design like that Combine the two, go to a layer, and you can merge selected. 
So they're both selected. Both those are turned into one. And then, of course, you can go back to repeat punch, pinch and punch, and you can distort that. So you can create some very weird distortions of design using that filter. Filters, repeat punch again, and you can distort it that way. And so on. So you can see you can do quite a bit. And of course, you can always hold down the alter option key again and duplicate that design to create all non number of complicated designs like this, which you can merge together. Now, let's just undo all those. No, actually, just delete it. Even easier. What you can then do, of course, you can use also use channels. So if you want to, you can go to channels. It lets me, yep, there's channels. And you can select a, the red channel. So just go to red and you can see now the red channel there. When you do, you can go to repeat, pinch, punch. And you can see it distorting there. And you apply it three or four times. Maybe change the settings. Then you can go to the green. Go to filters and distort. And if you don't want to use the same setting, of course, you can set the origin point maybe up there this time. And you can see the design there. Click apply. Now, I'm not going to do the blue one, but you could see the sort of thing you can. And you can do it obviously three or four times. You can make it really obvious. And then go to back to the channel. And then you can see you've got a lovely combination. And then, of course, in the, just have to click there. That's the key thing. You can always go to repeat. That's so you can distort it again, or maybe apply filters, distort, pinch punch again, and select a different origin point. And you can see you can distort that. Filters like that. So you can use that. Now, I'm just going to go back to the first bit. So without anything there, it's all back to normal. Yep, so I'm up in RGB. What you can also do, you can use selections. So if you don't want to warp and distort the whole thing, let's just create a quick selection there. And now you don't have to have a continuous selection. You can go over here to add. So there, and just add additional bit there. You've got two selections there. And now what you can do, go to distort and pinch punch. And you don't have to have it inside the area. You can actually have it outside. So you can see you can distort a particular part. So you can you can have it there if you want, but you don't have to. You can have the origin out here, and you can distort it within the selection. Click apply, and apply it again if you want. Do that again. Now, let's next one. Let's deselect that. What you can also do, and I'm just going to keep that now like that. You can also use layers. Well, actually, before that, I'm going to go to show you actual layers, one of these shapes. Let's go for a donut. Use donut. So donut shape. Now, just go over to filters and go down to distort and down to pinch punch. And you can see then it will distort thing. Now, it's not particularly, I would say, brilliant with that. But of course, you can vary the shapes. You can create your own shapes. You can create with the pen tool, create different designs, and then apply this to that. So you can distort it, say like that, click apply, then filters repeat, repeat, and repeat. So you can see you can distort that. Also, just go over here, and you could create obviously a lot of text. I'm just going to go to artistic and just create a single letter or a couple of letters. Something like that. Once you've done that, what you can do, you can always go to Filters again, and Distort, and Pinch Punch. And again, you'll see this assistant coming up at the corner there. And then again, you can, because it's turned into a pixel layer, that's the key thing. So if I go to Layers, you can see it's a pixel layer there. And you can distort those letters, of course. Move that around. And also, if you want, of course, click Apply. You can always go to Filters, Repeat, Repeat, and distort it even more. Now, you've got this design here. What you can also do, all these were destructive effects. Now you can also apply a non-destructive effect, layer menu, and go down to new live filter layer, and go down to distort, and then pinch punch, probably in a different position. Some Sometimes they move them around. Ah, oh, takes a bit of time to come up. Now the thing is, with this pinch punch, well, same if you're using layers before, you can combine layers. So if you've got multiple layers, you can always use blend modes. But here, you've got blend modes for the effects, so you can run through these. So Let's go to difference. Difference is always a nice one. You can see the difference there. So you can distort that around, it makes a sort of like spotlight as it goes around. 
and you can see the design distorting like that. Oh, okay, obviously stretch it so far, it actually distorts the image down the bottom. And it's still live, so you can always go back to it. You can see it's selected, background layer has got the pinch punch applied to it. If you don't want it to be just applied to that, if you've got multiple layers, then you can move that, that layer just above. Just put it above, it doesn't make any difference in this because of course clearly it's just one. So you can see it just doesn't change, but it's applied just to that. But if you have more, more than one layer, it's quite nice to have it just applied to that layer, if that's what you want to do. Well, what you can also do, of course, is you can always go to a layer and new light filter layer, and you can go to distort and pinch punch again. And now let's obviously put that in the center there and change that. And you can see now you're distorting this design. And of course, you, what you can do, you've got blending modes, you can go for difference there or maybe exclusion. So you can create some very weird surrealistic looking designs simply by changing uh, and that can stretch out there as well. Again, this would be lovely with a, with a time lapse feature. You can certainly see a, there. And there's the design. And again, you can see all your layers. And you can, of course, drag it down again to there. So it's attached to that. And that one is attached to that one as well. And it will vary. Obviously, that one varies now because I've moved. Let's just move that up. Yeah. So you can move it around and obviously it will change the effect. So. With that, what you can, oh, it's below now. I didn't want that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> you just have to practice with it, sort of moving backwards and forwards. Sometimes will change the result. But still, I think it's still very effective. And of course, you can still always change the blending mode. So if you want to run through that, that one's quite nice as well. Hard light. And of course, you can always, of course, group them together and maybe apply multiple ones, multiple ones of these ones, so you can select them all and just work with duplicates of that if you want to do that as well. Now, let's go to, I'm just going to remove those now. Don't want that, and I don't want that. So back to that one. What you can also do, you can use them with pattern layers. So you've got layer, and you could go, where is it, pattern layer? New pattern layer from selection. Now you don't have to have the whole image, you could use a selection as it says. You could just select, the little part of it and maybe use that but I'm just going to do it for the purposes of this video just from the current selection which is the whole thing and then I can resize it you can see the resizing now the thing is which something I discovered only recently there's a mirror option tucked away at the top so there's the mirror and that I think creates it makes it much nicer because now you can see there's no breaks in it you can see the design there and obviously you can move it around so you don't want that, or where has it gone? There's the Sometimes you can lose it, suddenly you go off and you select the wrong layer. I was thinking, that's strange, it's not selected anymore. But what you can do then, of course, is you can still use the pinch punch. So you can go to filters, and you can go to distort and pinch punch. And that's just applied to that, this. So you can see then, you can create a very interesting sort of if you want. Obviously you can go out, extend outside of the pattern layer. Now that would be also pretty, if you could time lapse that, that would be quite headache inducing actually I think. So probably best not to do that. But you can see you can distort it and you can of course go the other way as well. So you can create all kinds of different or maybe very subtle ones as well. You don't have to have it to the extreme. It's always nice to us. For purposes extreme you can have it go that way. So it goes that way, go outwards. You can do that and distort it, and then once you're happy with that, you can click apply. Now, what you can then do, of course, is you can always rasterize the whole thing. So layer, you can go down here to rasterize. So it's all one, the, the pattern's gone now. Obviously I've got, but you can, of course, go to, again, a layer, and new pattern layer from selection, and then do the same. And again, unfortunately, we we'll have to keep going back to mirror. Be nice if it defaulted to mirror. Default of mirror would be great. If it remembered, that would be nice. A sticky feature where it remembers the last thing you did, which is, I want it to be always mirror. I don't really like the other one. I have to say mirror is so much the nicer option. And of course you can rotate it. You can also shear it as well. So you can create some very unusual designs there. So once you've done all your transformations, what you can then do, of course you can rasterize it again. So you can go to a layer and then down to a rasterize. 
So you can rasterize the design, and then of course you can use pinch punch again. So just go to filter, distort, and pinch punch. So I'm just going to extend that, and I'm going to do it from that center, so you can just see there. There's the center of the pinch punch, and I'm putting it to the max. You could do the other way if you want, if you're reasonable. Click apply, and maybe do it a couple of times. And now what you can see, you've got here, you've got a pixel. It's just a layer, a standard layer, so view, studio, and layers. You can just go there to maybe go with difference. So you can get a real weird sort of color combination now, combining those. What you can then do, of course, is you can, if you want to, go and select all of them and go to layer and merge visible. So you've got that design. Now what you can do, you've got it's a nice selection here that looks like a globe, a sort of sphere in the center. So you go over here to your elliptical marquee tool, make certain you're on the right layer. You might want to remove the other ones actually, but often I find I'm, I'm, sometimes I end up working with the wrong layer. But just go from the center, because that's where obviously the pinch punch was basically just about there, very roughly of course. So you've got that design there, that selection using the elliptical marquee tool. Then you can go to layer menu and new pattern layer from selection. And then what you can see then is you've got this new pixel layer, this pattern layer, I should say. Yeah, I'm just gonna remove that one. You can see obviously behind it. And of course, what you can do with go over to the move tool, you can resize this. You can see you can rotate it if you want to have different angles. Just might make it a bit like that. And of course, what you can do, you can also duplicate this design. So if you want to, just go over there to Pattern, and you can go to Layer and Duplicate. So you've got two pattern layers now. With that pattern layer selected, that's the key thing, select the pattern layer, you can drift, just drag that over there, and you can resize, of course, but you've got the combination now of the patterns. Don't have to resize it, of course, you've got that. What you can then do, of course, is you can go to Layer, and again, let's just select all of them, everything there, layer and merge visible. So everything's merged into one pixel layer. Let's just get rid of them. Sometimes it's uh, it's great that the layers below are saved, <laughs> displayable, but sometimes it, they're quite frustrating. You end up with a comment. So you've got this sort of design. You can create literally thousands of different designs using the good old pinch punch. I think it's a really useful filter for some really amazing designs. So definitely worth checking out. I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time. That Photoshop, Illustrator, Finity Photo, of course, Finity Designer, fin Finity Publisher, Critter, Rebel, Painter, and many, many others. Also, any comments, please put some comments. Always appreciated. Anything I've done wrong, anything I've done right, quite possible done lots of things wrong. Also, please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Uh, nearly every day I add a new video, so uh, always putting those up. And also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.